Our lesson this week is the last lesson of the spring quarter. And we have had a spring quarter of lessons that have, again, left us asking one question and needing to answer that one question, right? We have been left with the question, do you believe in Christ? And if you do not believe in Christ, why not? We have seen that the lamb, that we should find him worthy to be praised because again, Christ, the lamb of God, he has done everything for us. He has given us a promise and a hope that we can have everlasting life so long as we believe, so long as we have faith in him. Again, the point of our Sunday School lessons this quarter is taking a look at Jesus being God. Jesus is God. And all of the lessons they have left us to the lesson this week to where, again, that point, it becomes definite, where Jesus, he leaves absolutely no doubt that he is God. Our lesson this week, coming from the last chapter in the book of the Revelation of Christ, there in the 22nd chapter of the book of the Revelation, there in the sixth verse, it opens with John and the angel, that has guided him throughout the revelation of heaven. And we'll see there that the angel said to John, these words, they are faithful and true. They have come from the Lord. Now these words that are faithful and true, they are speaking about the premise of the revelation of Christ. They are speaking about the promise of heaven, the promise of salvation, the revelation of Christ. It serves as a fulfillment of what Christ had promised all the way back over in the 14th chapter of John's gospel where, where Jesus, he, he said to and promised to the disciples that he is going away to prepare a place for us, all of us who follow him, and that he will come again and that he will receive us unto himself. When you open up the book of the revelation of Christ, you see that picture fulfilled. You see us in the kingdom of heaven. We saw it in our Sunday school lesson last week, where we, the saints of God, where we're gonna be singing and we're gonna be rejoicing in the kingdom of heaven, where we're going to be praising him for all that he did for us. We are there. You can see in the 21st chapter of the book of Revelation, where we are the bride of Christ, where we're going to be the beauty. We're gonna be the centerpiece of the kingdom of heaven, this book. It is a wonderful book. And so we'll see there in the seventh verse that the word that is faithful and true, it comes with both a warning and it comes with a hope that comes from Christ. Jesus, he said there, behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. So for us believers, again, this is a hope. You know, we look forward to the day, right? I hope that you do. I hope that you're looking forward to the day where we get to fulfill this picture that we see here in the book of the revelation of Christ, where we are in the heavenly kingdom, where we are worshiping, where we are praising, where we are rejoicing in that everlasting joy of the Lord, in the everlasting peace of God. This should be your hope, but for the sinner, for those who live in disobedience, the book of the revelation of Christ, it comes with a warning. That warning is that they will stand before the great white throne and that they will be judged by the Lord and they will not be allowed into the kingdom of heaven. So one today, one should be getting ready. We should be getting ourselves prepared. As I have said and preached before, this place is a dressing up room and we should be getting ourselves dressed. We should be getting ourselves right in the eyes of God, fit for the kingdom of heaven. Now, at these words, John will see there in the eighth verse that he fell to the feet of the angel and that he worshiped him because these words and all that he has seen in his vision of heaven, they were so wonderful. But the angel tells John there, he told John, don't be worshiping me. He said that he was merely a fellow servant of the Lord. He was just an angel. He wasn't one that should have been praised. As we saw in our lesson last week, angels, they aren't the ones who, who gave their life for us. Again, the only begotten son is greater than the angels. He is the one that we should be worshiping. He is the one that we should be praising. Not any angels, not anything else that you believe is worthy of your praise in this world. God, he is the one who continues to bless us day by day. He is the one who is certainly worthy to be praised. So, being a fellow servant in ministering the word of God, the angel said to John there in the 10th verse, do not seal the words of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand. 
And so again, now is the time for, for us to be getting ready. And for all of us who are ready, guess what we should be doing in this moment in time? You and I, just like John, we are ministers or we should be ministers of the good news, of the promise of salvation, of the promise of the kingdom of heaven. We should be ministering. We should be sharing this word with all of those that are around us. Again, we should not seal up the prophecy of this book. If it's good for us, it is certainly good for somebody somewhere, and we should be sharing it with them. Now, Jesus, he said there in 12th verse, he said, I am coming quickly and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. Jesus' reward is the kingdom of heaven, right? And so again, that is what that is what we should be ministering today. We should be ministering the kingdom of heaven. That is something that, that we have and we shouldn't be selfish about it. We should be sharing it with all of those that are around us. We should be letting the world know that the reward of the kingdom of heaven, that it is with Christ. And in order for one to receive that reward, they must be with him. But you understand, and I said this in last week's Sunday school lesson, you cannot live disobediently. You cannot be unappreciative of the Lord. You cannot be one who does not find the lamb worthy to be praised today and think that somehow you're going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. The work of the sinner, it cannot be rewarded. It will not be rewarded with an entrance into the kingdom of heaven. One must find the lamb worthy today. One must find Christ today. And we, those who have found Christ, we should help those who are struggling to find him today. We should help lead them. We should help guide them to Christ so that they can find him and so that they can also enter into fellowship with him as well and then have part in the kingdom of heaven. And so Jesus, he put the final say on all of this there in the 13th verse by saying that he is the alpha and the omega, that he is the beginning and the end, that he is the first and the last. Jesus, he again, he is Lord. Jesus is, he is God. Let us remember, God is the Father, God is the Son, and God is the Holy Spirit. We'll see there in the 16th verse that Jesus, he spoke to sending his angel to testify of these things in the churches. His angel testified that Jesus is the root and offspring of David, that Jesus is the bright and morning star. In other words, the angel was testifying, ministering, he was witnessing that Jesus is the Messiah, that he is Christ, that he is the only begotten son of God. Who, who are we? And I said this in last week's sermon. Who are we to, to question that? Who are, who are we to challenge Jesus on, on what is the truth? When God, again, he is almighty, he is all-knowing, right? Who are we to challenge Jesus on, on what is the truth? When we ourselves, we should be learning from the Lord, right? We, we don't know everything. God, he is all-knowing. And so, again, we should have faith, we should trust in, we should... We should believe in him. And, and as I said last week, there's nothing wrong with, with asking questions if you truly desire to learn. But if you ask questions from the standpoint that you're the one who is the higher authority, you would actually look like a fool if you tried to challenge God on, on you yourself being all knowing and that you know all truth. You would again look like a fool if you did that before the Lord. So the bride there in the 17th verse is then invited to come. Those who are attentive to the invitation, they should then turn around and invite others to come. We'll see there in the 17th verse. This again, this speaks to our duty, right? This speaks to our role. We are to go into the highways and we should invite all of those who we interact with. We should invite them to come to the Lord, to take part in the kingdom of heaven, to have fellowship with the Lord today so that they can take part, so that they can be a part of the kingdom of heaven, so that they can be a part of, of this future picture that we see here. Those who testifies to these things, Jesus said there in the 20th verse, he said that he is surely coming quickly. There is no reason that we should doubt this. However, there in the 18th verse, we'll see that those who add to the prophecy of this book, the book of the revelation of Christ, 
They are warned that God will add the plagues written in this book to them. And if anyone takes away from the words of this book, God, we're told there in the 19th verse, will take away their part from the book of life. He will take away their part from the holy city and from the things which are written in the revelation in this book, the revelation of Christ. So those final words there, they share with us the importance of, of the words of the book of the revelation of Christ. And then I would include the rest of scripture as well, because again, the book of the revelation of Christ, it, it fulfills, it speaks to, and it shows the fulfillment of the promise of Christ. And so that is something that, again, we should take seriously. And, and if you're going to minister, if you're going to minister the word of God, you should be true to it. You should be honest with it. Don't add anything to it. Don't subtract anything from it, especially when it comes to the book of the revelation of Christ. Again, we must be serious about it. This is a serious matter. It is about everlasting life. And so again, we end on a note here today to where I hope that you would believe in, in Christ. Jesus, he again, he said he is the Alpha and the Omega, that he is the beginning and the end, that he is the first and the last. Again, he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be worshiped. And, and I've said this, and I've said this all year long. We should follow him. I don't know about you, but I want part in the heavenly kingdom. And the only way that I can have part in the heavenly kingdom is if I follow him. His words, they are true. There's no lies in his word. And so heaven, it is real. He is real. The Lord is real. The promise is real. Salvation is real. You today, you have to make the choice for yourself to believe. And so again, I leave you with the question that has been left with us all court alone. Do you believe in Christ? Will you believe in Christ? My hope today is that you will. My hope today is that you will trust in the one who is the beginning and the end, the one who has the final say, the one who, who is all powerful, who is almighty, the one who is sovereign. My hope is that you will believe in him and not anybody else. Trust in his word. And again, his word will lead you to everlasting life. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson and I hope that you'll share this lesson with someone somewhere. Be sure that you like this video and if you aren't doing so already, make sure that you're following this channel. Hit the alert bell as well so that you don't miss any notifications for the next video that we share here on the Newfound Faith YouTube channel.